Welcome back, viewers, to part six of my lecture on the Golden Bough. And this, and this section we'll be discussing the idea of the dying and rising God archetype, which <coughs> James Frazier finds clear examples in Atis, At At Lateruses, Adonis, Dionysus, and Osiris. And these examples are what we're going to be uh, discussing as the section, as this part six continues on. It should be noted that the idea of the dying and rising God may seem like a precursor to Christ because of the deep antiquity of this idea. But it but these gods, it should be noted, lacked a philosophical dimension to their character enough to be not totally in line with Jesus as the philosopher, Jesus as a teacher in general. These are dying and rising gods who typically were active at, in the scope of an agricultural setting. And that cycle. So Attis and the Terraces were primarily were primarily worshipped in Phrygia, Phrygia being an Eastern Greek speaking nation, east relative to Greece, around the Black Sea. And uh, this is from Fraser, Volume One, Chapter Three, Section Five. According to legend, Attis married the local goddess Sibylle, like Aphrodite would marry Adonis, and we'll discuss that later. But the peoples of Poseidon believe that he died from loss of blood after a suicide beneath a pine tree, as opposed to dying from a boar's attack, like Adonis. The blooming of violets at the season of his resurrection were substituted for the red anemones of Syria. The ceremony of his resurrection took place at the spring equinox and went to Easter, and on the first of its four days, an effigy of Attis was adorned with violets and affixed to a fresh cut pine tree erected in the temple of Sibylle. Fraser also mentions that Attis was born of a virgin who conceived by putting a ripe pomegranate in her bosom. This recalls the ancient belief that the pomegranate was the forbidden fruit in Eden, and that the dying and rising God is also typically resurrected by a sacred marriage with a fertility goddess or his consort. Additionally, Fraser says the story of his suffering, death, and resurrection was interpreted as the right grain would be by the reaper, buried and in the granary and coming to life again when sown in the ground. It should also be important to know that the Uberitic ball cycle, Aneth, the uh, goddess Aneth, grinds moat or the god death through a millstone in order to fertilize the earth. So again, we see this idea of a god breath of the resurrection being used in the agricultural cycle. Fraser also argues that the more ancient rite of Lateris's worship may have been absorbed into the rite of, inher of inheritance by annual death among the priests of Attis and Phrygia. However, this relationship may also have been more distinct and less conflated as a result of the more ancient Lateruses being slain in the summer or autumn, while Attis was so in the spring. He reckons that the cult of Attis must have passed into Italy in a time when the literal seasonal sacrifice in the harvest field or threshing floor as prescribed by Lateruses' worship had become an ancient relic of Phrygia's barbaric past. 
Again, the epic poem from Ugarit called Akat also shows the metaphor of the threshing floor as the seat of judgment. Now, in the 1890s, it's important to recognize that, that uh, although knowledge, you had knowledge of the idea that Adonis, the consort of Aphrodite, came from Adon, if the Phoenician. Should be right. Okay. Although James Fraser had knowledge that Adon. that Adon would become the Greek uh, Adonis. Let's just read this in English for this sake. But this was working backwards, okay? And the stories of Adam as a religious figure are, begin to come into the Adonis myth in Greece by around the fifth century BC. But this name, Adon, is largely working backwards from the name Adonis of Greece because of a lack of knowledge of the Ugaritic texts which show that Adon was really Baal, as we see in the, cycle, in the death and resurrection of Baal in the Baal cycle of the Ugarites, which was excavated. In 19, from 1928 to 1929. So this is Paul. Who is really... Paul. Oh, Of course, the Ugaritic texts come to us from the late Bronze Age before the Phoenician, the Phoenician city-states become, become really grown to their own as Phoenician and not Canaanite, like the Ugaritic texts. The Ugaritic texts are Canaanite, they pass into the Iron Age Phoenician, and then to Adonis the Greek in the 5th century BC. So after the marriage of Adon and Astarte, the Semitic precursor to Aphrodite is Astarte, Adon was, slain, was said to have been slain by a boar on Mount Lebanon in his effigy ritual he buried at sea. At Byblos, Adon was believed to have arisen again the following day, at which time he ascended from the sea into heaven. It's important to understand here that this idea of dying and going into the sea and then being resurrected by coming out of the sea fits with the motif of the sea itself as the primordial chaos and the division of the seas, the division of the waters which you see in Genesis 1 is 
separating the order from the chaos. So in this example, Adon returns to chaos and death, so he may be so he may be re so he may be broken down and reformed again in order to be resurrected by coming out of the chaos into order. His festival was known to have been celebrated around Easter, when the seasonal blooming of the red anemones was believed to represent the healing blood of Adon fertilizing the land at the beginning of spring. Traditionally, the resurrection of Phoenician deities was symbolized by the divine marriage. So that's the idea that in order to put fertility in the land, the, um, the male aspect of the, divine, of the divine couple must die and be resurrected by the sacred marriage with his consort. And this idea of the divine couple in Phoenician religion was used to support the divinity of their kings who were seen as the progeny of the divine couple. Secondly, Dionysus, also viewed through the lens of the Ubridic ball cycle, was believed by the classical author Fermius to have been a bastard son of Zeus, whom he set up on the throne in his stead when on an errand. Then Hera, from her jealousy, kidnapped the child and gave him to the Titans, who dismembered the body and scattered the pieces. Zeus had killed the Titans and was erected and erected a temple around the heart of his son. His resurrection, which Fraser shows, has been preserved in many conflicting accounts, was symbolized by the divine blood, like the anemone of Adonis. Fraser also notes the frequency with which Adonis was associated with the sacred bull, and in the images from Kizikus and in the images from Kizikus, which portray Dionysus as a bull figure. This is very simple to El of the Uberites, who is frequently referred to in the title Bull El Thy Father, that occurs repeatedly in the mythological texts. And in Genesis 49, you see the uh, the phrase, the mighty one of Jacob, and we can identify that the word one, here we go. Genesis 49. Ubaritic. Epics. Genesis 49 has the phrase mighty one of Jacob. Ubridic texts have the phrase Bull El Thy Father repeated throughout. Now, this word one in Hebrew is. Scholars have linked Atar 
as the precursor to the Hebrew Aber, so they are, so Aber becomes the descendant of Ater because of the relationship between Rubriotic and Genesis <coughs> as Western Semitic or Canaanite languages. This is, to this is all meant to emphasize the, really, the, the sacred bull can be the leader of the pantheon, as in the case of El, or can be the beloved son of the leader of the pantheon, in the case of Baal. Now, Fraser here makes a point that I disagree with where he places Osiris in the role of the dying and rising God. Now, this is problematic because early yeah, we just spring. The inclusion of Osiris as among the dying and rising gods of antiquity prizes his connection to the harvest and agricultural and agriculture above his role as judge of the dead. Although the other examples have the idea of describing of descending into the underworld in addition to their fertility functions, it is Osiris alone whose role as corn god in the earliest Old Kingdom dynasties is later abdicated in front of his status as king of the underworld and judge of the dead. So what I'm trying to say here is that in the, in the archetype of a dying and rising god, the fertility function and the resurrection are inextricably linked. Okay? Same with the, uh, this idea of falling into chaos and then being reordered as the Dionysus and Osiris specifically being broken into several pieces and then reconstituted. Those two aspects are related in every one of the other dying and rising God examples, except for Osiris, where first he was an 